Hey guys, and we're back at it again with skill five, avoid thinking trap. So with this skill in particular, a lot of people can relate personally to this. I've had several people come up to me after the training and talk about how this skill over most of them that they learn and the information is great and they can actually apply it to their personal lives. So they, they get a lot out of this skill. So I encourage you to pay close attention and going through these examples, put yourself in the shoes of this example. So make it, make it hit home, make it close to you and personalized so that you get the most out of the skill and you can better utilize it. So let's get started. So as you see here, avoid thinking traps is represented by a unlocked walk. This represents identifying and correcting counterproductive patterns in thinking through the use of mental cues and critical questions. Avoid thinking traps bottom line up front. It's a skill that builds mental agility and it enables you to um, hit that optimal performance that we previously talked about. Identifying thinking traps can also enable you to avoid them in the future. But I want to make it clear that avoiding thinking traps doesn't mean that you're always second guessing your intuition. Intuition is very critical for soldiers. So let's not misconstrue this concept. So what are thinking traps? As you see here, thinking traps are overly rigid patterns and thinking that can cause us to miss critical information about a situation or individual. So a lot of this research is based on Aaron Beck and from his findings, he wants us to know that, you know, thinking traps are common. They happen every single day. And with these patterns in our thinking, they interfere with our, our ability to see clearly of a situation, to be accurate in assessing situations or individuals. Ah, okay, so here is our ATC model again. So with this ATC model, our thinking traps are now the thoughts. Thinking traps occur in the heat of the moment. And now these thinking traps are what's driving our consequences. So when we get stuck in a thinking trap, we become so certain of our perception without any evidence to support it. So it's critical to enhance resilience and performance and building strong relationships by actively working to, to change the thinking traps that we fall into. And as you can see here, there are six thinking traps listed under thoughts, and we will later dive into what each of those are and an example of them. Okay, so now what I want you to do when I say go is pause this video, same old, same old routine, and we are gonna go watch the Paul Potts clip under avoid thinking traps. Now, while you watch this video, it is from America's Got Talent. Um, I want you to focus on the judge, Amanda, the female judge, and think about what was her initial thoughts about Paul Potts, and as well as the other judges. What were their general reactions and beliefs about this man? And did it change by the end of the clip? What was Amanda's more general idea and she gives us away by some of the comments that are made, specifically by her. So let's go ahead and pause this video and watch that clip. Okay, so welcome back. Let's talk about the video. So a lot of people, or majority of people will agree that Amanda's specific initial thought about Paul Potts changed by the end of the video. Well, come to find out, Amanda's general belief actually got cut out of the video I either, I don't know the reason, maybe Paul Potts got too offended or the media just uh, clipped it down. But in the beginning, somewhere in there, Amanda's general belief is stated that people with blue collar jobs who look like that, like Paul Potts, cannot sing opera. If you haven't seen this video before, I think we were all amazed at the end find out that, wow, he has an amazing voice and he can indeed sing opera. However, the evidence of Amanda's general belief didn't change. And that was, she made two comments. Do you remember what they were? It was one, that he is a lump of coal turning into a diamond, 
And the second comment was, he was a frog that will turn into a prince. Finding an exception to the rule doesn't necessarily mean that the underlying belief has changed. Sometimes we find it's hard to change your beliefs, and the stronger the belief, the harder it is to change it. Just like the beliefs, that's what thinking traps are. They're difficult to change because, like the beliefs, they're strong patterns in how we think. So let's take a look at the thinking trap. Okay, so we're going to go over the first thinking trap. And here's an example of this thinking trap. You've called home several times during deployment and haven't been able to reach your spouse. You think to yourself, she's, my wife is, out running around on me. What do you think this thinking trap could be? This person is jumping to conclusions. The definition of jumping to conclusions is believing one is certain about a situation despite having little or no evidence to support it. The key words here are certain, little, or no evidence. Jumping to conclusions can lead to a variety of consequences, including emotions in sadness, anger, and even guilt. So for example, the soldier in the scenario might have the emotion of anger and the reaction of leaving a heated phone message for his wife. And you can't, you can't take those back. This thinking trap causes us to be very impulsive in our emotions and reactions. This thinking trap in particular undermines resilience and the effectiveness it has and our overall well-being by keeping us from seeing the situation accurately. The key takeaway for jumping to conclusions is it is the mother of all thinking traps, which means that all thinking traps are some form of jumping to conclusions. So that's why we teach this one first. Thinking trap number two. Here's the example. You call home to talk to your young son and he's distracted by the cartoons on the TV. You think, oh, he's mad at me for being away. This thinking trap? Mind reading. Mind reading is where we assume that you know what the other person is thinking or you expect another person to know what you're thinking. Is anyone else guilty of this? I know I am. Be honest with yourself. So the key words here is assume and expecting. Mind reading can lead to emotions just like jumping to conclusions such as sadness, anger, and guilt. So for this example, the individual in this scenario might have the emotion of sadness and the reaction of calling his or son, or excuse me, his or her son less in the future. This thinking trap prevents effective communication. This thinking trap is commonly found in very close relationships. And like I said in the beginning, put yourself in this scenario. Does something like this happen to you often or has it happened in the past? Having a bad or misunderstood issue like this one you see here, distancing yourself or just ignoring it is going to make it worse. So it's important that we recognize these thinking traps and combat them head on. Thinking trap number three. Here's an example. There are two seconds left in regulation. Your team is down by two and you're on the foul line. You make one of two free throws and your team loses the game. You think to yourself, man, it's all my fault. This was a big game and I lost it for us. Me, me, me is this thinking trap. This is where you believe that you are the sole cause of every problem you encounter. Do you know someone like this? Are you the someone like this? The key words here are sole cause and every. Me, me, me can lead to emotions such as guilt, sadness, and embarrassment. So for example, the indiv individual in this scenario might have the emotion of guilt or embarrassment and the reaction of excessive apologizing to his or her teammates. So I'll never forget when I first learned this skill, Sitting there at the Fort McCoy schoolhouse listening to the instructor, this 
example stuck with me forever. And it made me realize that not necessarily me, but some people around me were falling into this trap and they didn't even know it. So she told a story about one day her daughter said, I'm sorry, mommy, when she dropped a coin. And she said, oh, honey, you don't need to apologize. That's not your fault. Like, accidents happen. Well, as the day continued, this little girl, her daughter, kept saying, I'm sorry, mommy. I'm sorry, mommy. And she kept saying, I'm sorry, over and over and over. And finally, the mom, she, she just stopped. And she said, why, why is she doing this? Why are you apologizing so excessively? And what do kids do? They are parrots. They repeat everything they hear. So it finally dawned on her that their, their little girl has been hearing her, the mom, apologize over and over. And that's where she was getting it from. So it made her realize that she was falling into this thinking trap of me, 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 blaming herself and believing that she was the sole co uh, problem, or excuse me, cause of every problem she had. And now, not only was it affecting her, now it's affecting her daughter. So the way we act and conduct ourselves is very influential, especially if you have kids. So be mindful, like, be honest with yourself. Are you or someone in your family or friend falling into the thinking trap? Now, don't get me wrong. There's times when it's important to take full responsibility when it's warranted. But it's also critical to look at all of the possible contributing factors to a problem. This allows an accurate root of analysis. Additionally, by recognizing that you're not the sole cause of every problem, you can hold other people accountable for the actions, allowing the people around you to take responsibility and grow and improve from the situation. This requires a lot of mature communication, open-mindedness, being level head this one particularly will te uh, test your mental agility, which is, again, the target of this skill. So the fourth thinking trap. Your unit screws up a training exercise. You think to yourself, I'm stuck with a bunch of losers. These guys are bringing the unit down. Them, them, them. This is where you believe that other people or circumstances are the sole cause of every problem that you encounter. Keywords here are sole cause and every. I'm sure we can all relate to this thinking trap example at one point or another in our military careers where you just feel like someone is just constantly is blaming you or others for what's going wrong. By doing this, this thinking trap can lead to emotions of anger and a reaction of aggression building up. So, for example, and, and then the individual in this scenario might have the emotion of anger, and then the reaction will be yelling at his or her fellow soldiers. That's not a good feeling ever to be yelled at, especially when it may not be your responsibility for what's happened. This thinking trap can lead to a victim mentality in which the person believes that they're at the mercy of other people or circumstances. So, for example, someone or something other than themselves. So it's really important to look at all the possible contributing factors to a problem. This allows an accurate root cause analysis, just like me, me, me. And it allows for the individual to take responsibility for his or her actions and identifying areas that they may need growth and development. So, thing trap number five. You receive a summarized Article 15 from your company commander. You think to yourself, I'll never become an NCO. My career is over. This thinking trap, always, always, always. Always, always, always is believing that negative events are unchangeable and that you have little or no control over them. The keywords here are unchangeable, little, no control. With always, 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 it can lead to emotions of sadness and a reaction of withdrawal. So over time, it can lead to hopelessness and helplessness. So for example, the soldier in this scenario might feel sad, and then they start withdrawing by avoiding opportunities to build his or her career. This is one of the most toxic thinking traps because it leads to helplessness and hopelessness. 
Identifying where you have control is very crucial and critical to resilience. And thinking trap number six. You are a newly promoted sergeant who's about to deploy. Your wife calls you at work to remind you that it was your day to pick up your three-year-old son at daycare and you're 15 minutes late. You think, oh, I'm a terrible husband and father. I can't even pick up my child on time. You also think, if I can't even do that, how am I going to be accountable for soldiers downrange? There's no way I'll make it as an NCO. This thinking trap is everything, everything, everything. It's where you believe that you can judge one's worth and character based on a single event or believing that what caused the problem is going to negatively affect many areas of one's life. So here you see that this thinking trap has two different components of the definition and how we get stuck in this thinking trap. But the thinking trap just causes a downward spiral. We start connecting dots where they shouldn't be connected. Everything, everything, everything can lead to an emotion and sadness, and this will lead to a reaction of also withdrawal. Over time, it can also lead to hopelessness and helplessness and giving up. For example, the soldier in this scenario might feel depressed and avoid speaking with his wife and son. They start withdrawing from those close to them. So this thinking trap refers to scope or how many areas of your life will be affected. This thinking trap too is one of the most thinking traps because it leads to that helplessness and hopeless, hopelessness feeling. By judging a person's worth based on a single event or character assassination limits one's ability to target behavior to affect change. Believing that the cause of problems will negatively affect most areas of one's life is the inability to quarantine problems or compart compartmentalize into one area of life. So just to review, these are the most two toxic thinking traps because it leads to helplessness and hopelessness. And oftentimes that this can prevent individuals from achieving goals. And what is the mother of all thinking traps? Jumping to conclusions. Hi guys. So real quick, I just want to demonstrate a day in the life of them, them, them. What that looks like. Sometimes we may not realize or have an accurate point of view of what we're doing throughout the day. A lot of times these thinking traps dictate and determine how we perceive and interpret the events. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play out a day in the life of them, them, them from morning to night and what that'll look like. I have two cards. A yellow will represent a positive, more optimistic way of thinking. And then I have a pink card that's going to represent the them, them, them thinking trap. So let's do this. So I wake up in the morning, about to leave for work, and I find that my spouse has parked me in. I could think to myself, I forgot to tell him I had to leave early. Or, he's so inconsiderate. I can't believe he didn't make the extra effort to move his car last night for me. So I'm driving to work, and I almost collide with another car. I can think, I need to pay more attention. Or, man, that's that guy's fault. He's a jerk. He needs to learn how to drive. So I finally get to work, pull up to the gate. There is a huge line. I can think, should have left earlier. Or, man, those stupid guards, they're just rented cops. They like to take their time and show their power and talk to people. After I get through the gate, I show up to PT late, and another sergeant comes up to me and says, Nice of you to show up. I could think, man, I deserve that. There's no excuse for being late. Or, I could always write me, trying to call me out, make me look bad. Then, in first formation, I find out that I have to stay late tonight. I can think to myself, well, the work does have to get done. Or, man, this leadership sucks. They're just picking on me. And finally, I'm leaving post, and then my spouse calls, and he asks if I could pick up some milk. I could say to myself, he's had a rough day. I could probably earn some brownie points. 
I'll get the milk. Or, he can't pick up the milk himself. I have to do everything. So then, I continue on, drive home, get the milk, walk into the door, and then my spouse asked me, how was my day? How was my day? I had to pick up your milk. I had to stay late for work so the leadership sucks. I was late be by, uh, to PT. And the first sergeant just tries to call me out in front of everybody, making me look like I'm the bad guy. I get to the gate. The rent-a-cops are just taking too long. They're in my way and need to move. Another guy just can't drive, almost hit me, causing a wreck. And then you, you parked me in. How inconsiderate of you. It's a them, them, them mentality that's going to wear us down, our relationships. Because with all of these scenarios, I don't take the time to look into them and pick out what am I responsible for? I just want to blame everybody else for my problems. As you saw, I collected all those them, them, them thoughts. And I, I carried those with me throughout the whole entire day. And those are negative thoughts, almost. And it, it becomes unattractive. It starts weighing us down. Do you think that people really want to be around that? Think about, I mean, that's just one day, one, one example. Think about how many negative thoughts like that start to bury us through the week, a month, a year. So over time, these thinking traps become set patterns and influence the way how we remember experiences. So if I were to look back on that day, I'd be like, yeah, that's a bad day. Why? It's because my thinking trap had me interpret it, interpret it very negatively. So just like this thinking trap, over time, these thinking traps further reinforce our beliefs. Remember going back to the beliefs with the Paul Potts video, because they drive us to interpret events in a way that supports our beliefs. So for example, with them, 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 a thinker interprets the events in a way that strengthens our beliefs that we're not the sole cause of every problem, it's everybody else. So this thinking trap in particular, as well as all the thinking traps, it can cause us to miss out on critical information. It can cause us to be inflexible, leading to inaccurate information and just limiting our effectiveness from day-to-day -day tasks and activities, communication. And just like them, 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 the other thinking traps, uh, always, 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 and everything, 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 individuals stuck in these traps go through a similar process, which also reinforces their beliefs as well. Don't fall into the traps. We can do this by avoiding the thinking traps by identifying patterns that we fall into, remembering mental cues, and asking critical questions to identify important information that you may miss. Mental cues are words or phrases you say to yourself that remind you what you need to do to get out of that thinking trap. Critical questions retrain your brain to notice important information you missed in the heat of the moment so that you can be flexible, accurate, and thorough. We call this FAT, flexible, accurate, and thorough. So here you see we've listed out the mental cues and the critical questions for each thinking trap. So for jumping to conclusions, the mental cue, slow down. Critical questions, what is the evidence for and against my thoughts? Mind reading. Mental cue. Speak up. Critical question. Did I express myself? Did I ask for information? Me, me, me. Mental cue is look outward. Critical question. How did others in other circumstances contribute? 
And if you want to, guys, take notes of this because um, you'll we'll, uh, need this on your assessment. Or then, then, then. Middle Q is look inward. Critical question, how did I contribute? Always, always, always. Mental Q is grab control. Critical question, what's changeable? What can I control? And everything, everything, everything. Mental Q is get specific. Critical question is what is the specific behavior that explains the situation? What specific area of my life will be affected? So here are the key principles for thinking traps. Know they're common. It's common to fall into a thinking trap, especially when you're stressed. They narrow our field of vision. They often lead us to miss out on important key information. Notice patterns. What are the patterns and the traps that you personally fall into? Use the mental cues and critical questions we just went over and be on the lookout for the common traps and use these mental cues and critical questions to recognize, oh hey, this is happening. It helps broaden your awareness of important information and it practices that mental agility. So like I said before, you're gonna get more practice on your assignment and assessment later, um, but right now we're gonna walk through a demonstration. So I'm gonna show you what with the ATC model, how these thinking traps look like with our heat of the moment thoughts. So our AE is, yesterday my significant other and I had a fight about money. So what those heat of the moment thoughts will look like are, we're jumping to conclusions. She must have overspent on clothes. Mind reading. She should have known that this month was especially tight because I had to renew the car insurance. Me, 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 I'm not a good provider. Them, them, them. She spent too much on shoes. Always, always, always. We'll never get out of debt. Everything, everything, everything. I can't trust her to be responsible for anything. So now, now that you have an idea of what those heat of the moment thoughts look like in the ATC model on your assignment, I want you to use an activating event that's an interpersonal situation, a time when you're, you were stressed out, a time when something didn't add up, or a time when you discovered something new after the fact. But before we start that, just a quick summer, summary and um, key points of thinking traps. Just remember that thinking traps can overlap quite a bit. Know that every thinking trap for each thought is less important than the realization that one has fallen into a thinking trap, missing critical information. A lot of people have specific thinking traps that they tend to fall into. And remember, these patterns of this thinking can undercut resilience. Any of the critical questions can be reworded to suit you as an individual or another person in the, in the situation. Intuition should not necessarily be ignored. Remember that sometimes acting quickly is important. Thoughts do not always contain thinking traps. It's just our thinking is often correct. So don't always second guess yourself. Remember that not everybody tends to fall into a thinking trap. If you have any questions, like I always say, reach out, don't hesitate, ask away. But if not, at this time, go ahead and begin your next assignment.